Welcome back, Star Wars fans, to the Hyperspace Database. I'm Jonesy the Mandalorian, your host of the show, here with today's topic, every ugly class of fighter in Star Wars. The term ugly was used for many starfighters or ships that were cobbled together out of whatever ship parts were laying around, or to fuse the capabilities of two different ships into one. There were several different ships seen in legends that were designated as uglies, and these ships were also known as juice cans or buzzers by the pirates and smugglers who most often flew them. Most of the time, these uglies were used when groups could not afford to buy a whole new ship, or when their forces were depleted and they had to use parts scrapped together from crashed or parted out vessels. These ships were most often produced by independent shipyards throughout the galaxy, though many were seen coming out of the Corellian system, where many of the YT series of freighters originated from. Here are some of the different designs of uglies that we've seen in Legends. The first ship that we will look at is called the Cherdaki, which translated means Death Seed. This was a Twi'lek fighter, and unlike the others on this list, this ship was actually considered a fully functional ship in its own right, not something cobbled together with no thought for design. It was designed with the cockpit of a TIE fighter and the wings of an X-Wing fighter, though this variant possessed a gyroscopic mount on it that allowed the wings to rotate around the cockpit, much like the B-Wing fighter. It used the twin ion engines of the TIE fighter, but had the weaponry, hyperdrive, and shielding of the X-Wing fighter. These ships were used by Twi'leks in the Legends X-Wing series of novels, The Krytos Trap and The Back to War, when they teamed up with Rogue Squadron and Wedge Antilles. The next ship on the list was the Corellian B-Wing fighter, or the C-Wing as it was often called. This ship basically combined the cockpit of the YT series light freighter and grafted that onto the body of the B-Wing fighter. This ship was also built out of junk to make a flyable craft, and was mainly used to target lightly shielded fighters and vessels, seen in the Legends novel Ambush at Corellia and Showdown at Centerpoint. The Clutch Fighter, or Tri Fighter, was a TIE Fighter Ugly that sported TIE Interceptor wings attached to the TIE Fighter's ball cockpit, in a wing configuration much like the TIE Phantom, though not to nearly the success that that ship was known for, and it didn't have the cloaking system that the Phantom was developed for as well. This Clutch Fighter, as it was fondly referred to, was actually better equipped than the standard TIE Fighter, using the twin ion engines of the TIE, but also having shields and an ion cannon in addition to its regular laser cannons. This ship appears in the Legends novel I Jedi and the New Jedi Order novel Dark Tide 1 Onslaught. The TIE Wing Fighter is one of the more popular ugly fighters, with the body of a TIE Fighter cockpit attached to the wings of a Y-Wing. Though sadly, this ship only boasted the weaknesses of both ships, having the slow engines of the Y-Wing and the lack of shields of the TIE Fighter. It was often called the Die Wing, as its pilots recognize the death trap when they see it. This ship was the opposite of the more popular and better equipped Y Tie, which featured the body of the Y Wing and the wings of the TIE Fighter. This variant was much more acceptable because it boasted the engines of the TIE Fighter while keeping the heavy shielding of the Y Wing. The laser cannons of the TIE Fighter replaced the ion cannons of the Y Wing turret for an impressive combined four laser cannons on the ship. This ship was fairly commonly seen in pirate fleets, because Y-Wings and TIE Fighters were some of the most regularly seen fighters used by the Rebels and the Empire during the First Galactic Civil War. Another example of popularly combined parts appeared in the X-TIE Fighter, which combined the body of the X-Wing Fighter with the wings of the TIE Fighter. This version had many variants when it came to weaponry, as some models had two laser cannons mounted underneath the cockpit, while others maybe kept one of the proton torpedo launchers and a single laser cannon for more punch. While this ship was not very space-worthy, a much better version was developed called the X-Scepter, which was a similar design but was equipped with TIE Interceptor wings instead of TIE Fighter wings, and still retained the hyperdrive and laser cannons as well as the proton torpedo launcher of the X-Wing. While still no match for the X-Wing or TIE Interceptor, they would do in a pinch, and were seen in the battle against the Yuuzhan Vong at the Battle of Dantooine, as seen in the new Jedi Order novel Dark Tide 1 Onslaught. A ship with a similar design to the X-Tie, but with a different base combination, was the Z-Tie, which took the body of a Z-95 headhunter and added TIE Fighter solar panels to it instead of the S-Foils it originally possessed. This ship was succeeded by the Z-Scepter, which literally crammed a Z-95 headhunter body into the body of a TIE Interceptor. It kept the engines of the headhunter and had the laser cannons of the TIE Interceptor added to the laser cannons from the Z-95, which were mounted on the sides of the solar panels. There was also a twin barrel turret on top of the cockpit, and there was an oddly placed slot for an astromech on the nose of the ship. The last ship on our ugly starfighter tour is the Death Raven, which is basically two B-Wing starfighters fused at the cockpit, 
making one hybrid fighter that was extremely well armed. This fighter was owned by the rebel mercenary pirate Aaron Kell, who resigned his commission from the rebellion when it formed into the New Republic. The Death Raven had all the weaponry of two full B-wing starfighters, with four assault laser cannons, six light ion cannons, and four proton torpedo launchers with 40 total torpedoes, as well as adding two more light ion cannons and a class 1 hyperdrive unit. It also had a larger central cockpit than the B-Wings and could carry 250 kilograms of cargo in its expanded cargo area. While all of these ships have come from legend sources, there have been sightings of uglies showing up in canon sources, as in the case of the 2016 Poe Dameron comic book, where the crime lord Terex assembles a pirate fleet of uglies using various parts from New Republic ships. Fun fact, the pirate Terex leads this fleet from his warship, known as the Carrion Spike, which was the personal corvette of Grand Moff Tarkin while he was stationed in the Outer Rim before it was captured by rebels. Poe and the other members of the Resistance run into Terex and his group of pirates and have to fight their way out of a mess, but with the unexpected intervention of First Order troops, they manage to escape from the Uglies and live to fight another day. The Ugly fighters were not very flashy and most of them were hardly flyable, but for those without the cash to buy new ships or for pirates and smugglers, they were better than walking and they served a purpose until better equipment came along. And when it did, you can bet that the pilots were grateful to not be piloting ships that would fall apart around their ears at the first sign of trouble. What do you guys think about these ships? Have you seen any fun combinations that I haven't listed here? Or do you have some fun names for the combinations of these ships? Let me know in the comments, I wanna hear from you guys. Shout out to Nick Vincible, who challenged me to create my own ugly starfighter. So here is my own personal ugly. It would combine the body of the Skip Ray blast boat with the wings of the Chiss Clawcraft and switch one of the main guns backwards to protect the rear of the ship. Thus, I would dub it the Chiss Ray Claw Boat. What are some of your ideas for an ugly? Let me know in the comments and post some pictures on our Facebook page. Want to know more about Star Wars topics like this one? Stick around to the end for some secret trivia, hit those like and subscribe buttons, and you can check out my other videos for more great Star Wars content. Be sure to hit me up in the comments and chat with me too, because I love talking to you guys. Super special shout out to my gold captain level Patreon supporter, Nick Sutphin. Your continued support is very much appreciated. Thank you guys so much for watching and for your support. Check out my other videos and we will see you in the next episode.